Hello everyone, welcome to another Toon Boom Harmony tutorial. My name is Frank Summers and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about the introduction to the deformation. Uh, so with that said, let's hop on over into Harmony. And if you do not have the deformation toolbar, I have mine up here at the top. Uh, but if it's not showing, it should be by default, but if it is not, you can right click and go down and make sure deformation is checked off and it will appear there. Um, you can slide these toolbars around by the way to suit your tastes um, but I like mine right there. Hey for some reason the scripting is showing let's want to hide that. So the deformation toolbar is pretty small. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. We'll just kinda give it a little more space. It consists of only a handful of buttons, but each one is very important. So the first thing we need to do is just kind of start off by just drawing something. So in this example, I'm going to do what I normally do, which is to say just draw an arm. And let's pick a pencil that you guys can see. Uh, let's go with... Da, da, da. It's too thin. 10 seems good. Is a 20 better for this though? Yeah, let's do it with a 20 so you guys can see it. Uh, I'm gonna go with just a very basic rubber hose type arm. Um, and we'll even put a little bit of t skin tone in there. Uh, something like that. And can I get rid of this? Yeah, sure. Okay. Next thing I'd like to do is just to make a hand. Add that close. Remember, you create parenting relationships by pulling pipes down. And let's see. Uh, let's just draw a little hand, a little mitten type thing. And okay, great. Looks great. Let's set our anchor point on that too. Great. Okay, so now with the deformation toolbar, we can actually go through and create a bone structure that will run through the length of the artwork here in our arm. And what is important to know immediately off the bat is that whatever layer you are you choose to start on is the that is where the deformation will be tied to. So in this case, I'm going to just choose my arm layer. I will go up to my deformation toolbar and click on the little hammer and wrench looking guy. And now you can see it changed to pink, and I have my, my cursor has changed. And if I click once, let go, and go down, click once again into the elbow, it will draw in a bone for me. Click one more time to make a wrist, and basically that's about it, all there is to it. The center in, that is defining our elbow, which is referred to as the articulation, um, it's a good idea to make that around the size of your, whatever the, whatever the um, your artwork is, Let me hide the, color card so you can see that a little clearer you know so like that might be too big this might be a little too small so in general you can make it around the size of your artwork it is also worth noting that this can be animated over time so if you need to make the elbow joint a little uh, more rounded or sharper you can you can do that too so if you look over into our node view you'll see it has created a little group and it's just by default called deformation arm <clears throat> and that really is about it if we step out and just click on our transformation tool, we now have some deformation going on here. Uh, what I'd like to point out is if I go back up into, so I'm going to keep it kind of bent like this a little bit. If I go up back into my deformation toolbar and click on my building tool, it'll snap back to its resting position and the bones will turn red. If I click any other tool, my transform tool, it turns yellowish, greenish, which means it's ready to go, ready to be ready to be animated. So if I head back into my setup pose, it turns red. That's just getting that's a visual reminder in what mode we are in, whether we're in building mode or we're in animation mode. So now what we can do with this is head over into our animation and we want this hand to kind of file follow along. So one way we could do that, if we wanted the hand to just kind of follow along, but before I do that, let me point out one thing at the top of here. In our, I want to reset this. I want to reset my animation because I've already moved the moved the hand. If I just highlight my deformation group, you'll see up here uh, a button has now become active. Reset current to keyframe. It'll pop that back 
into its whatever the resting pose is it'll put it back into the resting position as well as give you a handy dandy keyframe down there uh, if I wanted the hand to follow around I could simply just grab a pipe and connect it to the hand and now the hand will simply follow around right so this is following our concept of parenting right um, I'd like to just draw your attention to one quick thing as I'm sitting here manipulating the arm around, I'm using the bones to manipulate it. However, I am not manipulating the artwork itself. If I was to grab the artwork itself, like say just the, the, the arm and drag it off, you'll see it starts doing some screwy things. That is because they are kind of two separate entities, the artwork and the deformation itself. It is wise to stick a peg on top of this. So if you wanted to move the entire arm around, the entire structure around, and then we can set its anchor point. And now if we wanted to move the entire structure, all the hand and everything else with it, it's, it is wise to do that with the peg, using a peg tool. Or excuse me, using a peg, using the transformation tool. Now everything will move together. Okay, so now I can do a quick little animation here. Let me uh, expose everything. F5. Let's reset our reset our keyframe. We'll just move forward in time. Drop some keyframes down in our deformation group. Turn our animate button on, and we can animate away. So now we're going to run into a problem, and I will show you what. There we go. We've got a nice little little animation going on there, right? Beautiful. Looks like a thing of beauty. We can add a little bit of a settle to it. And I believe my animation is set to stop motion. Just change that. Great. Looks great, right? So why don't we run into what our problem is, the problem area that's happening. Right now, I just did a quick and dirty. I attached the hand as a part of the deformation chain. And what that means is I I can't really, the hand is not really functioning the way I think. It sees falling off. That is because if I was actually the the artwork this is very similar to puppet pins in after effects the artwork is actually around here someplace i don't know if you guys can see that or not but the outline of the arm is kind of showing up down in the camera view the arm is actually still down here what we are seeing in the camera view is more or less an effect uh, again very similar to how the puppet pins work in uh, after effects if i wanted the hand to move along Let's just go back in time. If I wanted the hand to move along and to be able to more easily uh, swap drawings out, I need to do something called, I need to add a node. I go to my deformation group. I need to add something called a kinematic output. Drag that guy up there. And if I pull a pipe out, connect it to the kinematic output, and use that to connect the hand, the hand will still follow around. And you'll say, well, it looks exactly the same, and you are correct. It does look exactly the same, however, it functions much differently. The hand is now a little more um, flexible. As you can see, the, the pivot point is in the correct spot where I put it before. Uh, it, it functions a little more like the, um, like the uh, forward kinematic tutorial I showed before. Um, and this is good because what it is, what it, this module is doing is that it is pulling out all of the positioning, position keyframe information of this very last point, and it is exporting it out. And whatever I hook this up to, it was, it's going to follow that around like a, you know, it'll just follow it around. And so what that means is we can hook all kinds of things up to that. We can go back to our original. Come on now, caps lock. I have a tendency of hitting caps lock constantly. Bracelet. I also don't know how to spell. And if we add our bracelet, and let's just go back in time again. Let's, re let's just reset. Let's just do our familiar thing. We'll color it red so we can see it. And we'll make sure we go back in time, go at the end of the time, expose it. And again, as, as predictably, it's not connected to anything. It's just going to be left behind. If we take it and connect it to our kinematic output, it's going to follow along. 
we could, oh, I'm going to throw some curveballs at you, and this is where deformation starts getting a little dicey. We could take the bracelet, and we could include it in the deformation as a part of the effect. And it will, in this particular case, work, because it's not getting hung up in the, in the articulation point there. But one of the things this does is, as, as I can remind you, the artwork is still existing back here someplace. The bracelet is really still around here somewhere. There it is. It's still there. And if I ever needed to change the artwork or um, alter it or even animate it, it doesn't quite behave the way you want it to. Like right now I want it to just go down, but it's not because the, the, the axis is being thrown off because of the deformation. The effect is being thrown off here. If I connect it to the kinematic output, it will behave in a very similar fashion to the hand. It behaves a little more the way I think it should behave in the camera. So what does this mean to you? This means you have choices to make. One is going to be better than the other, and a lot of times it depends upon whatever you need your model or your rig to do. Uh, me, personally, I think in this case, I would have the bracelet attached to a kinematic output. Just gives me a little more flexibility uh, in terms of I wanted to swap that out, make a new drawing of it, whatever, whatever have you. Uh, it just gives you a little more flexibility. So, moving right along, let's see. The next thing I think I want to show you folks is before we sign off, because deformation gets a little, uh, you know, it, we, we, I want to continue it into the next week, but I wanted to also just introduce a second form of the deformation and that would be a curve deformer. So I think the best way to do that is to, why don't I just take all of these modules and hide them by hitting D, they're hidden now. Actually, let's show this, and let's show the hand. And I'm gonna use my selection tool, I'm gonna to grab the arm, copy, make a new layer. We'll just call it arm two. Add and close, connect it, I'm gonna paste it. There, it's right on. It's directly on top of the original one. Grab the hand. Use my selection tool. Grab it. Copy. Just regular old copy. Make a new layer. Hand two. Yeah, hand two. And I'm gonna paste it in place. And now I can hide this stuff. Pasting in place and flash. You have to hit. Um, what is it? Control shift v I believe, that pastes it in place. You never have to really worry about that. Harmony is always going to paste it exactly where you copied it from. Um, so here we are. We have a duplicate. There's not, there, This is just straight up. There's nothing attached to these yet. So let's just repeat our process again. If I click on my arm, go back up to my create deformation, and this time I'm going to click and drag. Click, drag, go down to the wrist, click, drag up. And now what I've just created is a curve deformer. So this guy gives us a little bit of a noodly rubber, rubber hose type type articulation. I can take my kinematic output, the exact same thing, plug a pipe into that guy, and now the hand's going to follow around. And voila, we got ourselves some more cartoony rubber hand, rubber hose, excuse me, type animation. Um, the thing about that, uh, let's just expose it so we can see it. And again, I want to reset it using reset keyframe. Uh, the thing about just the curve deformer by itself is that it it gets a little, uh, it's noodly, right? Um, it requires, if I was to hit play, it's not really doing what I want it to do. It's lacking that stiffness that you might expect. Um, it requires a little more work on your part. And that could lend itself to some expressive, you know, you, you can get some pretty wacky type stuff out of this. You know, not that this is great or anything like that. I mean, I would have to finesse this. Um, but we can copy and paste some keyframes and we can get a little snap in there, you know. And, and if I added some ease, it might help a little bit. Shoot right through and a little bit of a settle and I mean not not great not, I would have to spend time on this but I hope you're getting my getting the point here uh, you know so we have two very different types of uh, deformers 
that do two very different types of things, um, but they're both very useful for their own situations. And you don't, and I mean, I'm just using an arm because that's just the most, you know, basic thing, I can, or a leg. Uh, but these, these, this, these deformers can be used on brow, eyebrows, or jaw shapes, or you know, anything that you need to distort and have somewhat control over, and whether or not you need to be stiff or kind of more loose and soft. Um, so it's up to you to pick and choose which one you need to use in a particular uh, instance. I'll give you one example, um, and I'm kind of going off on a bit of a tangent, but maybe you'll see my point. Uh, I was animating a uh, sleeping bag for a, a short I was just doing, and the characters had the sleeping bag kind of crunched up together. And so my initial thought was to use a curved deformer. So I'm thinking to myself, well, this thing's straight, right? The sleeping, pretend my arm is a sleeping bag now. Uh, I'm like, yeah, this thing's straight. So clearly I would have, you know, a curved deformer. And what that did was it became very difficult to try and give it like a bit of, to, to give it some stiffness because it did still needed some level of stiffness to it. It became very noodly and hard to control. And after a few experiments, I found that it was actually better to put a bone, a, def, a, a bone deformer in there. Um, and it just worked better in that instance. That's all I can say in that particular need. It's what it, that's what I needed. Uh, so I hope you I hope you're able to follow along. If you have any questions, please sound out in the comments, and I'll be happy to uh, answer them. Uh, next week I'm going to return with some more uh, more more in depth stuff about the curved deformers. Right now you're looking at some some amazing thumbnails. I do a, a live sketch every Wednesday at noon Eastern Standard Time. I have some random animation I stick up on the on the old uh, YouTube channel there. I also have more Toon Boom Harmony tutorial tips. There's a whole playlist in there. Please check it out. And there's also a little red subscribe button. Click that guy and you'll know everything the moment it happens. You'll know the moment it happens and you'll be so much happier. Thank you very much for joining me today and I hope to see you guys next week. Take care.